you all in the precious name of Jesus Christ let's bow for a word of prayer Heavenly Father Lord we are so thankful this morning dear God that we can be in your divine presence Lord you are the God that has watched over our lives Lord and watched over the lives of your saints I pray for them Lord both locally and abroad you see the many conditions Lord you see them on the beds of affliction my God Minister to them this morning, my God. We thank you, Lord, for bringing our brother Preggy home, my God. I pray, Lord, that your presence will be with him, my God. I pray, Lord, that you will steadily bring him, Lord, to full recovery, my God. We pray for your precious word this morning. I pray, Lord, take this mind, let something be said, my God, that will be God-ordained, my Father. Guide these lips, Lord, I pray through your word, and I pray that you'll anoint this place this morning. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning, brothers and sisters. We are thankful that we can be once more in the house of God to praise him and worship him. We uh, presented a few messages in the past dealing with brothers and sisters at the time, the last days, the latter times, and the spirit of delusion, brothers and sisters, that is uh, basically on the face of the earth and uh, spirits of seduction. Now, my brothers and sisters, this morning, we're entitling our message, Christ, End Time Fan at Work. Christ, End Time Fan at Work. I realize a title like this would be meaningless amongst many religious camps. And my brothers and sisters, uh, even with people that have come through the time of restoration, but we are living at an hour of time where we need to be able to apply certain verses of scriptures uh, to the time that we are now living in, what is going on on ground. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, there's a lot that one can deal into to bring 
the subject to its full content, but uh, we're going to try our level best to paint a picture that will help children of God uh, to realize what God is doing at this hour of time. So we're entitling our message, uh, Christ, End Time Fan. There wasn't, uh, I would say, a fan at any other time, but brothers and sisters, because the fan operation comes into effect uh, at uh, harvest time, and uh, so it's an end time uh, operation at work. So we're turning to Matthew chapter 3 and verses two, uh, 1 to 2. It says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. My brothers and sisters, uh, right here we see, it says John the Baptist came preaching. John the Baptist, brothers and sisters, uh, was not a writing prophet. You don't read uh, according to the book of John the Baptist. You don't find it. He came preaching. And my brothers and sisters, uh, and uh, John, uh, who was the apostle, is the one that's recording uh, this that we find in the book of uh, Matthew, or Matthew, and even in St. John. Brothers and sisters, so it says uh, that he came, uh, he said, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then in verses uh, 11, after he had talked about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. In other words, uh, he was pointing to the one that he is going to forerun, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he said, actually, he could not walk in his shoes because uh, he was going to be the coming Messiah. And he said, uh, it's through his ministry that the Holy Ghost is going to be given to the church. So actually, in these verses uh, of verse 11 and 12, John, in a condensed way, brothers and sisters, though he was not a writing prophet, gave brothers and sisters uh, the entire scope of how the church will run. Firstly, Jesus will come. He will be instrumental to uh, pave the way for the Holy Ghost to come, which will be the grace age where the Holy Ghost will be given. But then at the end of that grace age, there will become a harvest time. It is at harvest time that the fan operation comes into effect. So we have to see that the fan is not needed when you plant. Brothers and sisters, because uh, you're not at that stage uh, separating or purifying anything. But the fan comes into operation once the crop is brought onto the threshing floor and it's threshed uh, and then you need a fan to create winds uh, to blow the chaff away and the wheat that was planted will be taken into the Ghana. So John the Baptist uh, being uh, a preaching prophet but under inspiration, he's telling us the entire scope uh, of what the church will go through. Firstly, he said he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, but then he says whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his flow and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up <coughs> the chaff with unquenchable fire. Our purpose this morning is not to point out who's a chaff or who's a particle on the threshing floor, but it's for us to see there's a process at this end time that we all have to recognize, because if we don't, then uh, as a seed, uh, we will not want to be heavy, heavy enough to fall back on that threshing floor to be taken into the Ghana. We will allow the winds to just blow us. So brothers and sisters, uh, I hope you can see that John the Baptist gave uh, a concise picture from the time of the planting through the running of the church ages to the end time where harvest will take place uh, 
and then that fan ministry operation will come into effect. Uh, but we have to understand when the Holy Ghost was given, Jesus was not on earth. He was in heaven. You know, the, the, the early church, brothers and sisters, received uh, the Holy Ghost uh, 50 days uh, after his uh, ascension into, uh, into heaven. And my brothers and sisters, on the day of Pentecost, but we realize that uh, the fan also will be in operation when Jesus is not walking this earth. The Holy Spirit will conduct that amongst the church of the living God. So quickly to show you, brothers and sisters, uh, from the beginning of time, the seeds were planted. And uh, Jesus Christ would intercede for the church to receive the Holy Spirit. But as the second church age came into effect, tares and, wheats, uh, tares and wheat were in the same field. They were not asked to be separated, so there was no need uh, for any kind of a fan to separate uh, brothers and sisters, anything there. And time progressed on till we come to the 19th century, where there would be brothers and sisters uh, separation between the wise and the foolish virgins uh, and uh, as we come brothers and sisters even past into our timepiece uh, that fan is being operated uh, brothers and sisters now we are in 2022 and no doubt the last crop brothers and sisters is being dealt with by God so we see even James says in 517 Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. Brothers and sisters, uh, we always like to respect <laughs> and to honor men of God. And even when you look and think about Daniel, or you think about Abraham, or you think about Elijah, Elisha, or John the Baptist, uh, or men God used in our time, brothers and sisters, uh, we don't look at them many times as men that are human beings. They are men of like passions. They have the same uh, passions and weaknesses and frailties uh, like any other individual. So uh, we realize that if you don't have that in the back of your mind, it's very easy as even in our generation, when God used Brother Branham so tremendously, people call him he was the Messiah. He was Jesus Christ. People even still worship his photograph. And my brothers and sisters, so we're going to go back and look at Elijah of the Old Testament. And uh, we'll look at even John the Baptist, upon which the spirit of Elijah came. But we want to see uh, that they were men of like passions. And then we will bring it to our time, that God who anointed William Marion Branham in such a great way and see that he also was a man of like passions and because people cannot see that today over the face of the world that fan is working brothers and sisters uh, grace is still in effect I pray and hope that somehow that eyes may be open but nonetheless we need to be able to recognize that men of God uh, cannot be lifted up so high that you treat them as God, that they have no frailties, they have no weaknesses, uh, and their minds cannot get tired, that they can misquote and misplace uh, and uh, say things uh, that years later, you will try to take what they have said uh, and disprove uh, that they were men ordained of God. So we're looking at, uh, James said this, he was very clear that Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. In other words, he had the same frailties, weaknesses, uh, and that's an apostle that is making that statement. So when we look at Elijah, you know, when you term the name Elijah, it somewhat brings stars in the minds of the religious camps. You know, you always look at him as somebody so fascinating, and really God used him in bygone days, uh, in a tremendous way and even the anointing that came on brother Branham you will have to believe that brothers God used him uh, like no other man in the gift of healing and my brothers and sisters so 
Elijah, if you take it out of, he was a man of like passions, you can just have stars in your mind. But let's realize the scriptures uh, show us a few things that we can balance his life. We all remember that Elijah just came out of no way. The Bible doesn't tell you, brothers and sisters, uh, you know, which door he came from, uh, which family, and uh, in, in a great way. But he just appeared on the scene. And my brothers and sisters, uh, and uh, he came there, and there was a contest between uh, Jezebel's 400 odd prophets. And my brothers and sisters, uh, but we know that God had already spoken to Elijah to make this challenge. Because Elijah was a man of like passions. He's not going to go there with Jezebel and the prophets and say, well, you know, I'm going to prove something. No, because he knew God anointed him and God set the scene, he can come up there to Ahab and he said, well, he said, you got <laughs> these prophets out there? He said, let's, you know, if God be God, uh, then let's have a sacrifice given to them and I'll put a sacrifice and the God that answers by fire he will be God. He told them how long will you ought between two opinions and so brothers and sisters we know that he gave the first option to the prophets of Jezebel. He said okay because you are more in number he said take uh, uh, you know bullock and uh, sacrifice and you read the scriptures, brothers and sisters, from morning to evening, they were calling on Baal, and Baal was not answering. And my brothers and sisters, uh, the Bible says, Elijah, you know, you look at him as a respected, uh, serene, serious man, he started to mock them. Brothers and sisters, he said, maybe he's sleeping some way. Maybe he's talking with somebody. And brothers, God only knows, we are looking at the personality of him, what extent he went to mock them. Brothers and sisters, and said, you know, he may be chasing somebody. You can read that in the scriptures. And my brothers and sisters, of how he demonstrated this. And my brothers, we realized that at the end of the evening, brothers and sisters, they were so tired that Elijah now said, okay, bring me the block set the altar, the Bible says, he set it in order, he said, let them drop water, so that they will not say that, you know, he lit the fire some way. He said, three times he dropped water into that trench. And my brothers and sisters, and he called upon the God uh, of the nation of Israel, Jehovah God, and brothers and sisters, we see that God demonstrated by the fire coming down. Brothers and sisters, what a stupendous scene that must have been. Brothers and sisters, sir, uh, you can't see frailty. You can't see weakness. You can't see that nobody will want to stand before him. I don't think so Jezebel at that moment would have wanted to. And then after that, brothers and sisters, uh, the anointing was very strong. And the power of God came down till he told the people, bring them, the 400 odd prophets, and they slayed every one of them. Now my brothers and sisters, when you see such demonstration, you will never, you will take everything that Elijah is going to say as something that is positive, there's no weakness. But my brothers and sisters, we see once that act has taken place, Ahab was watching all this demonstration, and Ahab told Jezebel, all that Elijah had done. And withal now he had slain all the prophets with the sword. All the prophets, he slayed them. Maybe he didn't slay all of them. The people could have helped him. But brothers and sisters, <coughs> once this message went to Jezebel, we see brothers and sisters, uh, Jezebel, the Bible says, then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Now my brothers and sisters, uh, after seeing a man of God do such demonstrations, one would have thought that Elijah would have said, fly a kite, it won't happen. 
But you, this is where you have to recognize the man of like passions, the frailties, brothers and sisters. The Bible says, and when he saw that, when he heard that, he arose. Look at the way the word of God says, and went for his life. Brothers and sisters, uh, we have to take this, and we don't have the time to broaden it. But we have to understand, we are all men of like passions. And we cannot subject ourselves to anything higher than what God has called us for. There will be moments our frailties will show, our weaknesses will show. Because we see <laughs> Jezebel, she didn't have the prophets, but yet she spoke. And my brothers and sisters, we see that when a man was under, not under that anointing, the enemy, the Bible says, he was so frail that he went for his life. He ran, in other words, and he came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. Brothers, this is a picture of Elijah running for his life. Brothers and sisters, look at the difference between there when he, he, he called the fires down, and now Jezebel's words. Now we have to understand and parallel it when it comes uh, to our day. Brothers and sisters, uh, all the frailties are not the same. Elijah, he had his own personality. Brothers, no doubt, uh, Elisha had their own personality. John the Baptist and Brother Branham and, and the, the prophet that will come, brothers and sisters, to the Jews. But let us recognize that it's the devil's business to make them so infallible so that if you find one error or mistake, you will start questioning. When doubt comes in, fear comes in, then what God was going to do through that man becomes uh, ineffective. So brothers and sisters, uh, we see Elijah going. It says, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said it is enough now Lord take away my life for I'm not better than any of my fathers brothers just a few hours ago he was the anointing was so strong the fires came down he killed many prophets but now brothers and sisters he wants his life to go away now we've got to understand brothers God's put certain things in the scriptures so that we at this end time can even see, brothers and sisters, when that fan operation takes place, God is going to use uh, many things that we would read and see in, I would say, uh, some of the sermons or the spoken word books uh, or the literatures. And uh, we, in our mind, in our carnality, brothers, the devil can take it and say, well, you know, he said this year and, and somewhere else he said that, but... Its purpose is to create winds. Because if there's no winds, you can't separate the chaff from the wheat. And my brothers and sisters, so it's going to be these frailties and human statements that come out of men's mouths that I would say God would use at the end time, brothers and sisters, to create the winds that are necessary to separate and to purify. So we see that this is how Elijah reacted. Now, we're going, we're leaving Elisha out of the scene. Uh, we could quote other people that had weaknesses. You can look at Abraham when he was questioned about his wife, brothers and sisters, but we're not going to go there. We're going to John the Baptist, who was the one, brothers and sisters, that spoke the words, the fan is in his hand. We know, brothers and sisters, that when John saw Jesus, he said, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He was convinced because he said uh, that the anointing was upon him and God showed him upon whom the Spirit descends. That's the man, that's the Messiah. He was totally convinced that Jesus was the Messiah. But once he was taken into prison and that anointing is no more as it was when Jesus was there on the banks of the River Jordan, we start seeing that his frailty start to show. It says that now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. Brothers, 
You know, Herod put him in prison. And brothers and sisters, you can see the deep in thought, wondering, is that, was he really the Messiah? What's going to happen now I'm in prison? Brothers and sisters, this is, he was a man of like passions. 24 hours, 36 hours, as the days and nights pass by, many things can go on in your mind. And my brothers and sisters sitting in prison, he begins to tell to his disciples and said unto them, ask him, art thou he that should come or do we look for another? Brothers and sisters, one would say John the Baptist, the man who had the Elijah spirit on him, is now questioning if he is the real one who he said or he was the one. And my brothers and sisters, uh, we have to see, maybe I'll read from the scriptures, but you see his disciples, brothers and sisters coming there, and John the Baptist saying, please go and ask him, I, I need a word, you know, because you have to see the weakness of even a man of God. Jesus answered, Jesus is not near the prison, he tells his disciples. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John, I want you to see a little word here. Again, those things which ye do, hear and see. That means there was the first time John was spoken to. You know what? Jesus is doing all of this, he's the Messiah. But still the doubt and the fear, brothers and sisters, took the toll on John. And Jesus said, go and tell him again. These things that you do here and see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised up. The poor have the gospel preached to them. Go and tell John that you know... Uh, you identified the Messiah, the anointing is doing the work. Brothers and sisters, that he doesn't have to be afraid, uh, he's done his job. So brothers and sisters, once again, we see how in the moments of these frailties, statements can be made. You can look and say, well, I don't think John was a prophet, because look at he questioned, uh, you know, his commission and all of that. And Jesus had to repeatedly encourage John don't worry, John, you did your work. You forerun the Messiah. So, brothers and sisters, there was John. And we know he forerun the Messiah, but sitting in prison, he was questioned. Maybe we'll just uh, go there in the scriptures. Brothers and sisters, there in Matthew, uh, chapter 11. And we read in, in verses 5, the blind received the sight, chapter 11 of Matthew, verses 5. And the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor <laughs> have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So in other words, he had a word for John. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out to see into the wilderness? To see a reed shaken with the wind. Now Jesus is going to seal John's testimony. And he said no matter what you're going to think. What were you expecting? You think you're going to see a man that is pushed to and fro. Easily shaken. And my brothers and sisters when we look in the time that we now live in. And if people just look to the frailties and the weaknesses and paragraphs and sentences and quotations and uh, brothers and sisters, uh, I would say, things that were done under Brother Branham's ministry. What do you think? Was this man an ordinary man that kings called to be prayed for? Thousands of miracles took place. Uh, we heard of the queen's death. Her father was healed, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, by uh, Brother Branham. And my brothers, uh, many, many other, uh, I would say, miracles were done. So we understand, my brothers and sisters, that uh, you can't question. But Jesus is not here today to seal Brother Branham's ministry. 
we have to take the word of God and show how there were men that were weak in bygone days. Uh, and you cannot take, Jesus never qu asked, question John, why are you questioning me? He just said, uh, you know, blessed are they that are not offended uh, in me. So let's go further. And what went ye out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that were soft clothings are in king houses. But what went ye out to see? A prophet. Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I'll send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before me. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, they had not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. In other words, uh, he took him, he placed him, because uh, of all the prophets, John the Baptist was the one that was anointed to forerun the Messiah. So he is the greatest in that sense. But also you and I, who receive the message, receives the Holy Spirit in our heart that makes us greater in that sense, uh, that brothers and sisters, we have Christ in us from that point of view. So he goes on and he says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and Violence taketh it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Brothers and sisters, that lets us know from the time of John into the grace age, there is a warfare going on. It will be even right till the end. So there's a lot of people, brothers and sisters, no, they just want to sit cozily, just have a good uh, you know, Sunday service. Brother, preach us a sweet message uh, and there are places for that. But brothers and sisters, uh, in the time we're living in, we've got to understand uh, that the Bible said uh, that violence taketh it by force. This pressure against the true church of God, it'll come in different ways and different forms. And you will have to take the sword of the word uh, and be able to defend uh, what is truth. And he said, he that hath a year, let him hear, let him hear. And then Jesus said a wonderful thing that I want you to take notice of the time we live in. And he said, and whereunto shall I liken this generation? And I like to say, whereunto do I liken this Laodicean end time generation where the fan is in operation? It is like unto children sitting in the marketplace. No, who was he talking to? They were adults, they were Pharisees, Sadducees, religious heads. And he's saying, who shall I liken you unto? Unto immature children. Brothers and sisters sitting in the marketplace. I would have to say, look at your world wide web. That's the marketplace of today. And look at the arguments that are going crisscrossing. It is childlike arguments. That's why Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 14. Be ye not like children tossed to and fro. And Jesus in his time said, what shall I liken unto you? You're looking at uh, John the Baptist because of all of this. He said, uh, it's like children. You know how they try to imi imitate uh, Sometimes parents or musicians uh, or singers uh, and brothers and sisters, they, they don't do a very great job, uh, but they want you to applaud them like they are a qualified musician. Uh, they know what's happening. Jesus was saying uh, right here, it is like children sitting in the marketplace calling unto their fellows and brothers how they call on the world wide web today. Brothers and sisters, the chat areas that you can get caught in. Brothers, the websites, the new churches. Brothers and sisters, it has become a religious marketplace of immature children that should have understood what God did in this hour of time, that did send a messenger and an apostle, and he has men on the scene. But Jesus, brothers and sisters, said it plain. And saying, we have piped unto you, that means we play music to you, 
and you've not danced. Little children trying to play with me, and they want you to dance. Brothers, they want you to dance to every erroneous, conniving revelations uh, and arguments that they put on there. They appear from no way, but you must dance to them. Brothers and sisters, this is not my words. This is what Jesus said that they did to an Elijah ministry of his time. And you have not danced. We have mourned unto you and you have not... Uh, they, they, they come with their mournful uh, problems and say, well, this has been done and that's been done. And somehow if you don't go along with them, uh, they question why you are not lamenting with us. Brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us this generation is going to act the same way because Paul told it. He said in Ephesians 4.14, uh, don't be like children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And so, brothers and sisters, uh, and say, we have piped unto you and you have not danced. We have mourned unto you and you have not lamented. Then he began to say, for John came neither eating nor drinking. In other words, John was not a very great socialite. Yet, he drank. That doesn't mean he didn't eat and didn't drink, uh, eat food. Brothers and sisters, but you didn't see him amongst the Pharisees and Sadducees uh, where they were having the suppers and everything. He said, well, because John was a wilderness man, what did they say? They say he had the devil. Brothers and sisters, uh, isn't it the same today? Because Brother Branham was not perfect in his English, because he couldn't re-quote, uh, uh, you know, things that happened, the date, and express it, uh, I would say, technically right. They'll take it and argue the point and say, well, he's a false prophet. They went further to John the Baptist and said he's a devil because uh, he didn't associate with them. The son of man, you're talking about himself, Jesus, came eating and drinking because Jesus was going to say, come unto me all. He will go into all sexes of society. And they say, behold, he's a gluttonous man and a wine bibber a friend of the publicans and singers, because the Pharisees didn't go amongst those people. Brothers, he said, now, you accused John when he didn't do what I'm doing, you got a devil, and when I did what John didn't do, you say I'm a wine bibber. And then Jesus sealed the statement. He said, but wisdom is justified of her children. In other words, the children of wisdom, the wise saints, will know how to differentiate between John and Jesus Christ and the weaknesses and the frailties of John and Jesus Christ. They will have justified wisdom. That is why the Bible says the wise shall understand. The wise in the end time will be able to differentiate and understand what is going on in the marketplace of the World Wide Web and all of these places. They want to pipe, they want to play their music, sermons, uh, brothers and sisters, and they want you to just sway and dance to that wind. But brothers and sisters, uh, they don't seem to understand. It's creating winds for through the fan to be a cleanser, a separator, and purifier. So we see, brothers and sisters, and uh, I don't have time because we have to go on, Jesus upbraided, verses 20, then began he to upbraid the cities, wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented along in sackcloth and ashes. In other words, if people of bygone time had the opportunity to see the wonderful works that William Marion Branham did at this time, brothers and sisters, they would have repented. But because, I would say, people today as discredited, then you see even Jesus speaks that it's going to be more toler tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than some of these cities and individuals and people. So I have to say, the brothers and sisters, because individuals didn't understand John the Baptist, they called him a devil. Likewise, in this hour, it will happen 
Similarly, because brothers and sisters, the same spirit that anointed John the Baptist anointed a man in our time. And the same gift that was in Jesus Christ for healing was in this man. That's why the tremendous works were done. And if you cannot differentiate and evaluate it, then that's why Jesus sealed it and he said, wisdom is justified of her children. Her children, not their religious children, it's the children of wisdom, the children of the wise. So we're going to try and go faster here now. So we know, brothers and sisters, in our time, God allowed the seed to be planted and the church to go through these many phases till God would have a messenger on the scene with a pollinating message to be able, brothers and sisters, to have children turn their hearts, turn to the, I would say, the faith of the fathers. We know in this age, in 1963, there was a shout made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. And those that were ready went in. They went into the true word of God. And my brothers and sisters, we know that their hearts were turned to the apostolic teachings. We've come to know what the true plan of salvation by grace is all about. That we are justified by grace through faith. The true water baptism. What it is to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit as well as the gifts of the Spirit. About divine healing, predestination, eternal security. And knowing that there is one God who is the only true God. And he sent his son to die for us on Calvary. Brothers and sisters, so we realize that there was a cry made in 1963. Those that were ready went in. And my brothers and sisters, as Brother Branham passed off the scene, many of his booklets, many of his sermons, brothers and sisters, because he was not a writing prophet like Isaiah, brothers and sisters, Jeremiah, that could reread and maybe, you know, they, they were anointed. The Bible says all scripture was given by God. Brothers and sisters, God supervised what was written. But we realize in preaching it's a little different. Brothers and sisters, you probably sometimes don't have the time to really turn the pages of the date and the time and, and all of those things. And so there were many human statements made along the way. That God knew, because remember, John the Baptist said, this man would be instrumental to give you the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ. But then he said in verses 12, that in his hand is a fan. But that fan only comes in operation at harvest time, at the end time. And so there had to be something, statements made by Brother Branham. And also, I would say, as we move on to this time that we're living in, that people can take and play like children in the marketplace, brothers and sisters, uh, and it will be the ones that are creating winds. So brothers and sisters, we see as we come through this period of time, Brother Jackson dealt much on the dual statements of Brother Branham to show that he was a man that was human, a man like, like passions. Brothers and sisters, uh, but the, if you were led by the Spirit, there was a statement that will lead you back to the pages of the Word. And in other words, as you are brought to the threshing floor, brothers and sisters, and you are threshed by pressure from the religious world and everywhere else, brothers and sisters, then what we call the winnowing takes place. Where you are thrown in the air, and if there's no wind, then the particles that have been thrust and became loose will not come off the wheat. It will still stick to it. So, brothers and sisters, in order for, them to be, to, for there to be wind, there will have to be, in bygone days when farmers planted, and they had the product on the threshing floor, and they had it thrust. And if there were, normally they'll do it in a, where there's wind, so that the chaff can be blown to one side. But if there's no wind, they made artificial fans. Brothers and sisters, we may not know about that because we haven't dealt with ancient time, but they created wind 
so that, brothers and sisters, the chaff can be blown away. But in the spiritual dimension, God will allow the statements of this man to create, brothers and sisters, uh, I would say winds. There will be arguments, there will be conflict, and that's why Paul said, don't be children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And my brothers and sisters, since Brother Branham came on the scene, how many split religious churches you have? Yeah, in South Africa, brothers and sisters, maybe they're now congregating together for different reasons, but uh, you know, in nearly every city you had churches, each one believing uh, that the seventh seal is broken, Jesus has already come. What did it do? It created winds. It was man-made winds, not Holy Ghost, scriptural winds. So when Brother Branham passed off the scene, brothers and sisters, Brother Jackson had come and he passed off the scene. 2005, brothers and sisters, what voices that we started to hear. Brothers and sisters, the winds were blowing once again. The fan was in operation. The third day revelation came on the scene. Brothers and sisters, people <coughs> began to believe Jonathan Khan was one of the two prophets. Brothers and sisters, and all of these different revelations uh, came on the scene. And you and I know, in 2008, there was a separation. Brothers and sisters, uh, we realized that the fan was in operation. And my brothers and sisters, many individuals came out and they went their different ways. Because the time was not yet, I would say, that the seed has reached its climatic point for Jesus to come and take it away. And my brother, since Brother Jackson has passed away, it's almost 18 years. And we see, brothers, after the COVID and all the other things that have taken place, there's a generation now on the scene. That fan has not left the scene because of what you see now being propagated in the world wide web in the marketplaces brothers and sisters they are piping the organs they're playing the sermon instruments they want everybody to sway and dance uh, according to it and my brothers and sisters jesus christ said wisdom is justified of a children in other words uh, children of wisdom will know how to differentiate truth from error they will know how to see uh, a prophet that the people even in this time saw as a Messiah and God and place him uh, in the position of Malachi 4-5, uh, the B part and 6. And my brothers know that he was the seventh angel, the Laodicean messenger for this age. But nonetheless, from 2008, we have seen this fan in operation. And my brothers and sisters, it was fanning I would say to purify that wheat seed. Jesus Christ said, let the both grow together until the harvest. In other words, the fan is not necessary till the harvest. Let the tares and the wheat grow together. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together, fast the tares, bind them in bundles to burn, but gather the wheat into my banner. We have to realize this is compacted and condensed. But over the years, brothers Billy Graham, Oral Roberts, Teal Osborne, they did their works and many of the separations took place. And my brothers and sisters, we see chaff and wheat. They are the same almost proportion. We see brothers and sisters, but God is not coming for chaff, he's coming for wheat. Because that is what he planted in the ground. And as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world, not at the beginning, at the end. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of the world. It says, gather out of his kingdom. It's important. God is not, brothers and sisters, uh, trying to purify uh, what is out there in the religious camps. Uh, the process has gone on. But he shall gather out of his kingdom all things. Firstly, it's all things that offend. 
other words, every erroneous uh, teaching uh, and uh, whatever you want to place in the religious camps uh, that is coming against the true revelated word of God uh, is going to be gathered out of God's Holy Ghost church and kingdom. God will allow the time to remain here as long for that to take place because uh, God's word cannot be bypassed. So if there are things in the minds of men and women, God is the one that will remove those things out. And if you say, well, no, brother, you know, God's just been dealing with the things. It says, and them, that's people, which do iniquity. So brothers and sisters, God's church is going to come under scrutiny and brothers and sisters, uh, whether this end time generation are going to be like the children that Je Jesus said, what shall I liken this generation to? As children in the marketplace, uh, at that time they are to be in the vegetable market or any other. But today, they are in the IT business. Yes. In the world wide web. They have all the Zoom classes you can have. Brothers and sisters, and they have it all set together. And they will play the children music. And they expect children of God to dance to their tune. Yes. The Holy Ghost will allow you, brothers and sisters, to be inspired and invigorated by the truth of God's word. So what John the Baptist said, uh, in his hand is the fan, Jesus uh, complimented that and said, uh, there will be a spiritual dimension and there will be a removal brothers and sisters, uh, out of his kingdom, all things that offend, and them that cause iniquity. So we see, brothers and sisters, from the early church, that fan was an operation. The, the, the tares and the wheat were allowed to grow together, but in 63, brothers and sisters, there was a cry made. The wise and foolish, as well as <coughs> tares were being separated. And my brothers and sisters, we know that Brother Branham's message had much human statements, but there were all also the right scriptural statements in there to lead us to the word of God. What does that mean? It means if you, as a seed, have a theological understanding, or a traditional understanding, or ritualistic understanding, or an erroneous understanding, Brothers and sisters, you will not be weighty enough that the winds of doctrine blow. You're not going to fall, brothers and sisters, uh, back onto the threshing floor. You're going to be blown away to another side. The threshing floor is the word of God. It will attract a seed to the word of God to become more heavier. That is why, brothers and sisters, there was a carcass sent in this end time so that the eagles would feed upon it and the winds can blow but they will fall back on the word of God uh, to feed small but the rest will be blown by the winds that will be on the earth at this time and so brothers and sisters that fan is in Christ's hand and it is statements, human statements and our people look at brothers what came through a prophet messenger as well as through an apostle, as well as what is happening in this time. So on the threshing floor, as the seed is thrown up in the air, there is winds blowing to throw the chaff aside, and the seed will fall back on God's written word. And my brothers and sisters, they won't be swayed by what is going on. And brothers and sisters, remember the process is still an ongoing process. But... The righteous, that is not their own man-made righteous, that is the wheat seed. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Whose kingdom? The Holy Ghost kingdom, out of which all things that offend and cause iniquity have been removed, so the righteous can shine. And my brothers and sisters, uh, we have to understand. It says, uh, who hath here, let him hear. In other words, brothers and sisters, we are living at this threshold of time. That in front of us, as there's been shakings in the international world, 
in front of us, there's going to be a shaking in the Middle East. We have been well tutored in the scriptures concerning an era of the mirac miraculous. There's an era of the miraculous. There are people that have become disappointed, depressed. They don't talk much anymore. They don't know whether it will take place or not. Some of them don't believe in that. Brothers and sisters, true wheat seed. No God has to shake this generation to awaken them up. Many of them will not be shaken by just talk. Talk has gone on for a long time. But brothers and sisters, God has got pivoted things. That's why Jesus said, what shall I liken this generation? To children playing in the marketplace. Brothers and sisters, uh, they're different tunes. And they expect you, brothers and sisters, uh, to dance to their tune. We are, do we are living at a late hour. To know, brothers and sisters, uh, that God's true children will not be swayed by the instrumentality of man. There will be individuals, no matter what you will say to them, just like in the days of Jesus, they called an anointed man of God a devil. They called the son of God through whom your salvation would come, a wine bibber, a glutton. Brothers and sisters, sinner who's seating himself among sinners. What would they do in this generation? No different. Brothers and sisters, so we see, but there's still a little short space of time for God's fan to operate and we watch it operating even in this hour of time. Brothers and sisters, because we realize there is an offspring of the prior generation now that will have to come under test. And my brothers, that fan will have to operate there. And my brothers and sisters, uh, the seed, the true seed of God will feed on the revelated word of God. Every man in the ministry will see eye to eye. But it won't happen before your time. It says in the scripture very clearly, Isaiah 52, 8, they'll see eye to eye. When Zion is brought back, Zion is not brought back by negotiation. The temple grounds will be got back when there's an era of the miraculous and God shaken this world and the men in the ministry too will be shaken. And they will begin to see eye to eye. Not because they had a certain tune. No, brothers and sisters. If you go and read what Jesus said further. Maybe I will close with that scripture. Brothers and sisters, in, in, in Matthew chapter 11. As Jesus said about this, John the Baptist and all. Then he closed this in verses 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes who will be absorptive, even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son, but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, Save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. And then Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that are labored and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Brothers and sisters, so we say this to, to every man in the, in the religious camps. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in art, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Brothers and sisters, we are living in that time and God will cleanse his church. He'll have a glorious church, not having spot, wrinkle, and blemish. And brothers and sisters, there will be that fan in operation right till the end. Because there will be a bride that is perfected to this hour of time. So I thank God that we may not have lived in Jesus' day. But Jesus sealed and confirmed the ministry of John the Baptist, who had the anointing of the Elijah spirit, and he looked at the religious world, and he said, what shall I liken unto you? Children, brothers and sisters, and you can picture in your mind how this world has become. 
And Paul said, don't be tossed to and fro as children with every wind of doctrine. The winds are blowing. We have to be fed with the true revelated word of God and land back on the revelated scriptures, the threshing floor. May the Lord bless you this morning. Heavenly Father, we are a thankful people to be living at this hour of time. Lord, it has been your grace that has guided us, helped us to see through all that is going on. I pray take these words, use it, Lord, as you see fit. Bless every child, wherever they can be. Minister to them this morning. Touch the sick. And Lord, lead your people on. We ask these mercies in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is my offer. 